Hey everybody, how you doing? This is a 1962 Johnson CD19, five and a half horsepower. Um, it's got a broken shift handle over there. Somebody had pop riveted and cobbled on a chunk of steel, and yeah, we don't want it like that. Uh, so when we get into that, and the only way to get to that to fix it. Is to pull the power head and while we got the power head off we're going to change the impeller and we're going to put a new drive shaft to crankshaft seal down in there and um did i mention change the impeller well i did now and then also there's an o-ring uh, i can show you there's an o-ring in there too This sits on there. This goes under the engine. And this, uh, there's a seal on it. Here's another one. It doesn't have an edge on it when you get it. It's a cork seal. But anyway, it goes the one that's still on this one. But then, uh, you got this is also called a seal but inside there you see uh an o-ring right there yeah so we're gonna redo that well we got all this part uh it's a great time to do it you don't want to skip that uh the part number for that um this is a sierra number but if you type that in at marineengine.com oh it's got it on there too 303-347. That is the O-ring that goes at the top of the drive shaft. And it will go inside of that plastic seal. And again, that will be sitting right on top of that spring right there. Just like that. And I noticed uh, whenever I do these, when you're trying to push that down over the drive shaft, that O-ring wants to pop out of there. So I take the, the metal portion of the seal and dump it all back out again. I take this portion here and I set it down over with the flat side. I just set it on there, line it all up with the hole, and then I'll push it down over the drive shaft. Otherwise, that O-ring's going to keep popping out of there for you. I'll put all this stuff back in here. Oh boy, I had a lot of stuff in there, didn't I? Sorry about all that. Okay. Um, in order to take the power head off, you've got to disconnect the uh, spark advance and throttle linkage right here. Just pop the stainless clip off of it. It's like this here. Just pop that clip off. And then uh, set it in whatever kind of parts organizer you like. I get these at Family Dollar. They're a buck and a quarter. You can see through them pretty good. And as I'm doing each motor, I put all the parts in its own separate little wire basket. Okay, so you pop that, and then you disconnect the fuel line. Now this one has uh, the glass bowl separator, but you don't have to take these off because they're connected to the motor, but when they come back around the other way, they're connected to the fuel pump, which is connected to the motor. So those don't have to be taken off. They're going to come off 
before I'm all done with this motor because I'm going to put all new uh, fuel lines on it. The only one you have to take off for this is the supply line coming in to the uh, connector. Also, I had to remove the, that's what I got, you can hear the ultrasonic going. I had to pull the high-speed needle because it was coming through the front right here and I couldn't, wouldn't be able to pull the motor out. So I took that out. Carburetor is going to come off too. It's going to be completely disassembled and I'm going to do a carb kit on that. Okay, so you get all that stuff off. Uh, I got to finish up with that. I just roll it out of the way instead of taking it all that out. Just pull that up out of there. Bring it up through the boot. Don't tear, you know, don't, don't just yank it out of there. Try to help it out. I do any damage. Pull that out of there. Set it aside. Get me a rag here. Okay. Underneath here, you're gonna find on uh, on the older. Five and a half Johnsons, there's seven bolts under here, and they're all flathead screwdriver. Uh, I got started on this because it's, there's a lot of them. So, But these happen to be hex head bolts, and they are 5 sixteenths with exception. I found one at 3 eighths so far. This one is up in there pretty good, but with a couple extensions on, you should be able to get it out. A quarter inch drive so it's you know smaller now I'm having a hard time getting that back on there and holding the camera There we go. Turn some light on. Sorry about the camera going all over the place. I'm trying to see what I'm doing and hold the camera. Get that bolt out the rest of the way. There it went. Now I got it stuck down there, but we'll get it. We'll get it out of there. Okay, now let's see, make sure we didn't forget one. I'm gonna set the camera down.
Mom's out here tonight. She wants to learn how to do this too. Maybe there's one on the 62 that I'm unaware of. There, I forgot one all together. Oh, I see what it is. I've got to take that gland nut out of there. The gland nut on the high speed carburetor jet is uh, going through the front. I thought I could lift it enough to pull that back, but it's not happening. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. Oh. Life throws curves at you sometimes. I'm not gripping that very much at all. I'm just spinning it out. There we go. Now it should come off. First time on a 62. It's just a little bit different, but basically it's the same. There we have it. One power head removed. Now I'm going to show you the assembly that I was talking about as it sits. And this is also a great time to clean that mess. This gasket doesn't look all that old. Most of it stayed with the motor. I wonder if this part's still available. This isn't looking so good. Sorry about the camera. Well, I don't have that anyways, but it's getting pretty brittle. It seems to be like, you know, a foam, foam rubber. Okay, so now we gotta clean this real good. There's a lot of gunk in there. You wanna clean this up real good so you're not, while you got it all open, it's a great time to get all this cleaned up. Get all the crud that's coming out of there. You don't want anything blocking the, the water jacket and the pour, all the different pathways it can go. We want the motor to cool. 100% efficient. I've got a gasket scraper. But, like everything else, I can't find it once I hit the play button. But the assembly is like this. When you lift that up, you're going to find this gasket that baby's really whopped out uh, the last time I ordered them I got a five pack so let's see. let's see I just did this one this is a 1958 Gale five horse it's very similar except for the gasket everything's the same except for that gasket there's uh, it's a little bit different 
So if any of you Gale uh, fans out there uh, need that part number, I do have it. Uh, just got to find those. Find the gaskets. Anyway. Put all your parts in there. Okay, this is that part I was telling you about that's going to be, uh, you put also, uh, yeah, I think I showed you the part number on that. I bought a five pack of those too. But that will come out of there. Uh, that's what you need to put in. This one is, when you compare the one you take out to the new ones, you're going to see a difference. Because a brand new one is going to be round. And this one looks like it's got square edges on this flat surface here. But it's just from years of wear. And that goes right in here. Okay, next let's take the drop the lower unit. And take these extensions off of here. Oh, I want to get that spring and put it in over there. Tension on that. I'll see a nine sixteenth. You grab a nine sixteenth and tighten that so the tilt stays up. There we go, now it's staying up. Okay, next we're going to go after the four, the four bolts holding the lower unit on. That's two. I've had these break off before, I had to drill them out and tap it, put a heel coil in. That's three. Ooh, we got one missing. We got one missing, but I've got parts laying all around here. I got one of those bolts. I don't know yet if it's missing or broken off. We'll find out shortly. One more to go. Then I can see if that's actually just if it fell out in the water in the lake someplace and a fish ate it or if it broke off. If it is, I've got a heel coil kit with the insert and we'll do a separate video on that. I've had to put heel coils and heads. I had a JW folder. 1967 Johnson and one of the head bolts was broke. Okay, so now that was this one here that that 
was missing, but I don't know if it's broke off. I can't see it yet. We got, uh, you take one, two, three, and four. You get those out. And I don't like to just rip it off of there. I, I like to wiggle and pull. I don't want that water to stay up in the motor. Just give it this nice, fatty, easy pressure. Okay, now I got it ready to come out. I didn't want it to fall off, so now we're gonna take the two brass nuts off the shift connector. Yeah, got my hand on here. Those are three eighths, and they're right there. You really can't use a socket because there's no clearance right there. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna put a screwdriver through the wrench on the opposite side, like so, and it's gonna be a T handle now. There we go. A little improvising. Yeah, the engineer could have gave us a little more room for the wall of the socket on this, but we'll let him go on it this time. You get one, and then you're going to find a star washer. You don't want none of this stuff falling down where it don't belong. Be alert when you're doing this, and keep track that you didn't drop something down in there. Okay, now we're going to go in after the second one. To do the same thing, make a T-handle. I just put the, put the screwdriver through the end of the... There we go. Just takes a little twist. Then you should be able to do it the rest of the way by hand. I'm, I'm addicted to uh, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. I got it streaming in the background. One of the reasons is, I like mysteries, but every once in a while, and this is all from the 50s, you'll see a Evan Root or Johnson or Martin. He used, uh, there was a lot of outboards in his half hour short thriller suspense stories. Also, the main feature of the birds that he did, there was a Martin in that movie. In one of the scenes. Okay. You got that now? I'm going to set the camera back down and we'll get the thing the rest of the way up. Alright, the water tube stayed where it belongs. One lower unit. Now if this uh just making sure that the someone didn't change that to a plastic uh impeller housing because you can't use the one I got with a plastic housing. It says so right from BRP. Well I hate to even say that. Avenue Johnson. I made a mistake. It's not BRP. Do not use this impeller kit with a plastic housing. It must, uh, the size of the impeller must be different when there's a plastic housing. 
I can't be sure to say this, but I'm almost positive that if it's a 1962 or back, it's probably not going to have anything but real metal. Not a whole lot of plastic on any kind of vintage outboard that we work on. So while we're at it, we're going to take the impeller housing off. We're replacing it either way, but I want to get a look at and show you how where that's at. Again, these videos are for people that don't know how to do this. So, if you're going to be bored with me explaining stuff, you probably will be bored with me explaining stuff. So this looks like it was. It's a Mallory three two three five nine six. I think this has been replaced before. This is not the original one. It's beautiful black paint on it. Not a scratch on it. No seaweed growing off of it. Anyway, there's four uh, 5 16 strength stainless hex, hex head bolts to remove on that. It'd be faster if I grab the socket. Let's do that. <coughs> oh, also... There's a roll pin in here that you got to pull out. That keeps that base in place where the spring sets. Without that, you can't get the impeller housing all the way off. It just slides up and then it will stop. Fixture. I made this fixture. Uh, got a hold of T Mike. I texted him. I said, Hey, Mike, what's the dimensions on your fixture you got in all your videos? And next thing I know, he sent me a link and he made a video and he said, this is for Doug in Michigan. He texted me and wanted to know about my fixture dimension. So I made a video for him. I really appreciated that. I sent him some fishing lures as a thank you. And then I did a video on it too. If I had a better camera set up, I wouldn't have to do everything one handed. The videos wouldn't be so long and I wouldn't have to talk so much, right? friend of mine in Vassar, Michigan. We're uh, outboard friends. We met by doing business about a motor on Facebook Marketplace. He made me these. It's a shift, shift shaft <laughs> bushing removal tool and installer tool. The cool thing about it is he made it out of a um, prop shaft. An old recycled prop chip. That uh, bushing will fit right over that. Oh, by the way, he went even one better than that. He actually made me two brand new bushings, too. So, Mike Guzman in Vassar, Michigan. Kudos to you, buddy. He made those down in his basement. Those will be going in right there. Shift shaft seal. It's hard to say that without getting in trouble. <laughs> I 
All right, let's get this off here. We're going on 30 minutes here. I bet you when I look at the statistics or whatever, the analytics, 97% of the viewers clicked away at 26 minutes or something like that. I'm sorry. If it was musty, boy, we'd be... We'd be a short story compared to him. I like his videos. I like how he talks and jokes around. He's a pretty good guy. If you don't uh, know who I mean, just search on Yahoo or Yahoo. <laughs> search on YouTube for Musty One. He fixes all kinds of stuff. Pretty cool. He's funny, and uh, he always gets something done. He goes around and picks stuff up off the side of the road for free. Sometimes people give him stuff to work on. And sometimes he pays for it outright. All right. Let's see what's underneath door number one. Whoops. Didn't want that to come out, but it did. No biggie. Look at all that stuff later. Surprise, surprise. Something is not right here because I went to MarineEngine.com and I typed in CD19 and that's what this is. It's a CD19, which is a 1962 5.5. And the impeller I got is right there. that one but this has a tiny little tiny little one and I just noticed my uh, parts magnetic parts tray was just stuck to the bottom of my tripod <laughs> fell on the floor but I think we're in luck because over here in my parts cabinet I just don't understand why the part shows up different why it's actually different okay wow this is strange I think that's the impeller but this don't look the inside does. The cup there looks just like the one we saw inside that other. But we got another one in here. Seven six three seven three six. But that tiny little impeller there is what we're looking at. Basically, I got to make sure this is the right part number between the two of them. But that's a lot smaller than the one that I got today. Huh. Well, there we go. I don't know what. The... Yeah, I typed in CD19. And it told me to get uh, part number... three seven nine seven six four but that definitely is not fitting in there that's it's just way tiny now this <laughs> all right folks we're not going to get to that right now because i got to sort this pump uh problem out All right, but that's that's how you get the uh, motor off. That's how you remove the lower unit. And uh, when we go to put it back together, I'm going to have another video. Uh, just make sure you clean this. Now, you don't want to scrape and gouge any of this. You want to take your time, get it nice and clean, and you don't want a bunch of anything falling down in there. Just try to avoid that. Keep it up in the air like this so if anything falls it'll fall down this way rather than down in there 
All right, have a good night, and thanks for looking in.